Good afternoon, my friends. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome. Welcome to uh, Catholic Jewish Relations Internationally and in Florida. Uh, a presentation by the Center for Catholic Jewish Studies here at St. Leo University. My name is Matthew Tapey. I am the director of the Center for Catholic Jewish Studies. I'm also an assistant professor of theology in the Department of Philosophy, Religion, and Theology. And I just want to welcome you, I'll send a warm welcome to you. Thank you for traveling uh, many miles to come here today. Some of you uh, have come from uh, the west coast of Florida, you, some of you from the east coast, some of you uh, have come up from Miami as well and will be uh, and even driving back tonight. So uh, thank you very much for coming out today. Uh, you've, uh, you've really shown your support for uh, Catholic Jewish relations by being here and just encouraged what we do here by your presence. Um, uh, I teach Jewish Christian relations. I also teach world religions. Uh, my background is in those two uh, fields. Uh, I'm also a new professor at St. Leo University, just beginning uh, last year, the summer of 2015. Um, uh, we have a Center for Catholic Jewish Studies here. It's been here for nearly two decades, and the Center for Catholic Jewish Studies uh, seeks to build mutual respect and support among Catholic and Jewish communities, and has done so uh, with programs that bring in scholarly speakers to the Tampa Bay area, and programs that support undergraduate students learning Jewish uh, Christian relations, the basics of Jewish Christian relations, under doing research programs and research uh, projects at the center. Um, so we want to invite you to, to join us in that work, and you can uh, read more about the center in the flyer that looks like this in your folder. So, so go ahead at some point today and, and take a look at that flyer. It, it lets you know about our advisory board and the faculty at the Center for Catholic Jewish Studies and the work that we're doing. I want, to, um, I want to extend a warm welcome to Rabbi Skorka, our good friend who is here today. Uh, thank you, Rabbi Skorka, for coming. <laughs> our preparations for Rabbi Skorka's visit began uh, many months ago, and uh, it is a uh, deeply um, <clears throat> moving, moving experience for me to look out and see the amount of uh, support that we have received for this event. Uh, from you, from your presence, from your, uh, your interest. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, a deeply moving moment uh, for me. I want to share a little bit uh, from Rabbi Skorka's book that he co-wrote with Pope Francis. Uh, there's a bit here that, that has touched me, and uh, uh, I thought I might share it with you. In this book, uh, Rabbi Skorka writes, while studying the books of the Talmud, I found one that says that friendship means sharing meals and spending time together but in the end, it points out that the sign of a real friendship is the ability to reveal what is in one's heart to another person. That is what happened over time with the two of us. And uh, Abraham is speaking of his relationship with Pope Francis. He says, I believe that undoubtedly the most important thing that brought us together was and still is God, who caused our paths to cross and allowed us to open our hearts to each other. And so in the same way that uh, Pope Francis and Rabbi Skorka have come together because of God, uh, I believe our, our paths cross today because of God. So thank you for opening your heart and uh, thank you for sharing with us today. Rabbi Skorka is a chemist, a rabbi, a writer. In 1973, he graduated from the Latin American Rabbinical Seminary with ordination as a rabbi. And in 1979, he was awarded his doctorate in chemistry at the University of Buenos Aires. He is the rector of Latin American Rabbinical Seminary, which trains conservative rabbis, cantors, and educators in the Latin American Jewish community. In addition, he is the rabbi of the Olami community in Argentina. Pope Francis and Rabbi Skorka co-authored a book on interfaith dialogue titled On Heaven and Earth that was published in Spanish in 2010 and then in English in 2013. It is based on over 30 TV shows they co-hosted in Argentina. Rabbi Skorka was also honored by being asked by the Holy Father to write his uh, official, the introduction to his official biography. Rabbi Skorka, welcome. Uh, please join me in giving Rabbi Skorka a, a welcome, a warm welcome of applause.
Good afternoon for all of you. Thank you so much to San Leo University and for inviting me to share this uh, special moment with you. And uh, the second point is uh, try to understand my English. <laughs> It's my, fourth, it's my fourth language, and uh, when I speak English, uh, some influence from the other languages come in, come in the middle, but I hope that uh, you will uh, have the ability to understand my words, my English. Um, the idea is to tell you about my friendship with uh, Pope Francis. It's a really friendship. Uh, it's um, the relationship between us is not a political relationship. We are uh, in touch through emails. From time to time, he calls me uh, every. Uh, birthday, he calls me uh, by phone, and in certain other opportunities, but commonly we are in touch uh, through emails. And uh, he, begin, he begins writing to me with the expression, my beloved brother, and I answer him, my beloved brother. And we share, uh, we share it's some value which is a common value for him and for me and for our relationship. We speak openly one to the other. When I wrote to him, my brother, I feel him really very close to me in the same way that I am sure he feels me very close to him. Uh, both of us uh, share also the characteristic of uh, more than words, the importance in life are the acts. A couple minutes uh, ago, Professor Borelli approached me and asked me about uh, some declaration. Declaration are just words. The importance are the acts. What I do with the declarations. Uh, when Bergoglio, you know that, Fran that Francis is, is Bergoglio, his family name is Bergoglio, Jorge Mario Bergoglio. When Bergoglio was a uh, Cardinal Bergoglio and he was the um, Archbishop of Buenos Aires, um, and at the same time, he was the great chancellor of the Pontifical Catholic University of Buenos Aires, a very important uh, university in Buenos Aires. And they decided to bestow it on me the, an honorary PH degree for my contributions to the culture of the city. And the uh, he gave me the, the title, the diploma, the medal, he, Bergoglio himself, in the middle of a huge uh, celebration of the 50 years of the beginning of uh, the Second Vatican Council. And uh, when I um, spoke on that opportunity, expressing my gratitude to, to the university and the thinking about uh, the, the meaning of uh, this title and the meaning of the moment and of the place in which uh, the title was given me, I said that Nostra Etate, because the, the center point of, of the idea of for us in, in that moment was to celebrate Nostra Etate. Uh, two years before the 50 years of, the, of Nostra Etate, but in the, the leitmotiv of the, of the event was to celebrate the interfaith dialogue. 
is I said the uh, well how I understand this title in a university which was not so sympathetic for Jews 10 years before. So I so told me professors, Catholic professors from the university after the act, after the event, they, after the celebration, they approached me and they told me, you know, you must be aware, 10 years ago, it was impossible such a, 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 such a celebration, and this way a celebration to be, and that a, a Jew receive this honorary degree, taking into account that all the people who receive this degree, when you see the list is Cardinal this and Cardinal this and Cardinal this, or certain uh, important personality who did a lot for the church. And suddenly, in 2012, you see a rabbi <laughs> is a Jew, and not, and not just a Jew, but a rabbi. Why? And I said in my speech what I had in my heart. And I said that uh, I am uh, in some way a survivor of the Shoah because my, uh, my grandparents came to Argentina in the 20s, but the rest of the family perished in, this, in the Shoah from my mother's side, from my, from my father's side. Um, the, and I quoted the, the words of uh, Cardinal Casper, uh, in a, a preface he wrote uh, in a book about uh, uh, theology, Catholic or Christian theology, uh, after Nostra Etate, he begins saying uh, we, that the Christian theology, of course, uh, is not guilty, the anti-Semitic anti uh, messages which appear in, in Christian theology is not, I am quoting his words, it is not the, the cause, was not the cause of the rising of Nazism. But because Nazism at the end uh, had the idea to destroy the church as well. But uh, the apathy of European populations uh, regarding Jews during the Shoah, this, this was undoubtedly a fault of this uh, theology. And I said to Bergoglio and to the Nuncio and to the father, Ka, um, the preacher of, uh, in the Vatican for the Pope, Father Cal Calama, uh, it will come, how? Catamalesa. Catamalesa, yeah, something like that. Is something like that. Yeah, approach to the north, to the name. Is, uh, and I said to them, Nostra, that is a turning point. But the importance of Nostra, Etate, more than the words, are the actions. The words are a body. But a body without a soul is nothing. And you are giving soul to this uh, turning point in the relationships between Jews and, uh, and Christians. And uh, this is a part of the passions in the life of uh, the current Pope and me that we shared since uh, the, name, the, the 90s of uh, the former century. How was our beginnings? Because uh, I, uh, this is the idea of this, uh, of this speech, right? To, to, to tell anecdotes of how, how, how was that one encountered the other? How was, how was that God put us together? Is, um, I understood that dialogue is a very important thing. Not just dialogue between religions, between faiths, but dialogue as large, in general. Uh, remember a very important thing from the Bible. 
how appears in the book of uh, Genesis uh, the first crime, how is described the first crime in uh, humanity, in, this, in the history of uh, humanity. And Cain said to Abel, I know more. And after, how continues the versicle, the verse, that Cain took a stone, took something in his hand, and killed his brother. Why uh, uh, do not appear word sentences what Cain said to Abel? Two possibilities. Maybe that he said nothing, and maybe that what he said was nothing, was something, was a nonsense. Why? Because through dialogue, you avoid violence. Via a dialogue, a real dialogue, a sincere dialogue, not a hypocratic dialogue, a sincere dialogue, a deep dialogue, is a barrier against violence. We may, uh, we um, uh, performed 31 television programs with, uh, with Bergoglio and with uh, Marcelo Figueroa, who is now, who was, uh, was now with Bergoglio in, in Rome, and yesterday he uh, went with him to Sweden for the celebration of the 500 years of Lutheranism. And uh, he was the moderator of the program, Figueroa, and uh, the one who introduced the theme. And we spoke about all kinds of themes. We spoke about uh, family, about drugs, about all the burning themes for Argentinian society. Uh, because the idea was not only to show the people, uh, the Argentinian people, that a, a rabbi and a priest can sit together and can analyze in a very civilized way uh, the burning the burning uh, problems. The idea, so I understood, I'm sure that Bergoglio also understood them this way, is to show, uh, to teach our society about the importance of dialogue. So, uh, how was our beginnings? Uh, I understood, under Goglio as well, that dialogue is very important. So before that uh, uh, one uh, met the other, I published in an important uh, Argentinian newspaper called La Nación, The Nation, uh, articles about the importance of interfaith dialogue. And this newspaper is the newspaper that Bergoglio used to read uh, each day. So I suppose that this, this was the, the idea of Bergoglio to contact me, to have a contact with me in order to work together to, uh, for dialogue. Is, uh, for dialogue, or to have a contact with me just in case that uh, we can walk together or that he needs a rabbi with a dialogical that he can call me. And Bergoglio is a very pragmatic person. Uh, I used to uh, meet him in the special uh, tedeums and the special mass prepared for, we have two independence days, May the 25th and July the 9th. So I was uh, elected to be one of the representatives of the uh, Jewish community uh, in Argentina, and uh, to be at the cathedral, metropolitan, the metropolitan cathedral in, in Buenos Aires. And uh, then uh, one congratulate the other, uh, and I used to tell him, uh, your speech remind, uh, remind me uh, the, the way of preaching of the prophets. Because, of course, that the president the whole, and the whole cabinet were, uh, uh, were on that mass, and he used to give them a harsh critic. <laughs> this, this, this. With a 
Kirchners, uh, the situation was uh, quite different. They avoided to come to the mass, <laughs> and they went to Tucumán, to other places. But with the other presidents uh, in, since the 90s, uh, he's, and I used to tell him, you speak us in the same style as the prophets, uh, with uh, exaltation, with power, with uh, uh, you give a harsh message because even in the case that remains one poor suffering pe uh, people, you must shout out the claim of them as the old prophets of the Bible did. And the day after I told them, the, the newspapers give their own interpretation of your homily, and they explain that, of course, in a political way. But these were our, uh, our conversations. When he became the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, before to become a, a, a cardinal, or to be, uh, to be uh, transformed as Cardinal Van John Paul II, is um, he introduced changes in order to honor the representatives of the other cults in this uh, in these masses, the special prepared tedeums for the Independence Days, and uh, at the end of the service of the religious service, uh, the president waited for Bergoglio to go out together from uh, from the cathedral, but Bergoglio said. Uh, to the protocol, uh, to the members of the protocol, let the president wait a couple minutes, no more, uh, and before that, let us give a special honor to the priests, rabbis, and it's just to shake the hand uh, to him. We queued, and the, the, the idea was to shake the hand, the hand of him, to say him uh, happy Independence Day, to the nuncio, and that is it. Uh, standing on the queue, uh, uh, one of the members of the protocol said to us, just one second, no more, because the president is waiting. So, but, uh, you, know, you know, we Jews, as we are, I said, I thought, I will tell him something about the versicle that he quoted. Well, it's not going to be one minute, it's going to be four minutes, hey, one, one second, it's going to be four seconds. Okay, but now I have to give you a very important detail. Football. Argentinian soccer is a very important issue in Argentina you must know about. And really, uh, you know the word fun, to be a fan? It is, a, it, you know this word. He is really a fan of San Lorenzo. <laughs> he had in his, um, in his working room in the, in the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, a, a picture of the first team of San Lorenzo with the priest Lorenzo in the middle, sitting in the middle, who was the founder of this, uh, this club. So he asked me at certain opportunity, uh, it's part of your identity. Uh, and you, uh, from what the, uh, club are you from? So I said the River Plate. San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo was at that opportunity on the top, and River was more or less. Uh, River during 18 years. River, in any cases, is the the team who got more championships in the history of Argentinian soccer, and it's a very important issue. It's a theological. It, 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 it has to do with theology, and uh, and uh, during 18 years, we were almost champions. The second place, second place, second place, but the last. Parties, River lost. So, uh, and for uh, for other several reasons, the other fans from the other clubs used to call us chickens. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so again, I stood in the queue, and, uh, and when I approached Bergoglio, I uh, imagine yours, and he is the Archbishop of Buenos Aires. I'm a rabbi, important rabbi, director of the rabbinical seminary, but the Buenos Aires is a very Catholic uh, city, and to be Archbishop of Buenos Aires is something, is something important. <laughs> And the, and the church in Argentina is an, an important power. So I uh, look on him uh, from uh, in, that we don't stand on the same level. <laughs> so, so I looked at him. So I uh, shook his hand and I told him, uh, oh, your verse from Jeremiah was very adequate. It's very good because that just one minute, one second, two seconds. San Lorenzo was very good, River very bad. He looked very deeply in my eyes. And very seriously, I suppose that he is going to tell me something that, like, theologically, something. Why, why the verse of Jeremiah? He told me, I guess that this year we are going to eat chicken soup. <laughs> so this is Bergoglio. And this is, this is the current Pope. And the, the, an extraordinary personality. The, really, the, the end of the story is that the, I said to him, but this is Cisania. Cisania is a bitter, uh, a, a, a bitter root. Uh, Cisania we use in Spanish as a, a, a poisoned root. You are, uh, you are putting in the middle something, uh, poison you are putting in the middle. It's an expression. So the nuncio said, how do you dare to say this word in this holy place? So Bergoglio <laughs> said to me, are speaking about football. Ah, go ahead. <laughs> so this was the very theological, the very theological approach. Uh, behind the joke was a very great lesson. After years, at certain opportunity, when we discussed something, he said to me, you stand on the same level as me. We are standing, because I told him, but you are, you are the Archbishop of Buenos Aires. The, we are standing on the same level. And he tried, and when uh, we met in the, uh, in the Vatican with a great hug, as it was in Buenos Aires, and we joke one to the other as it was in Buenos Aires. No differences, the same relationship, um, even more, even more love. Uh, I can tell you other stories about Bergoglio, how, uh, I already told to some of your friends here, uh, how when he, um, when two journalists uh, finish to write uh, his biography, is um, is uh, it his authorized biography because the, he uh, he helped them with all kind of details. Uh, so when they asked him, uh, who would would uh, would you like to be the the person to write the the, the foreword? for the biography of the Archbishop of Buenos Aires. And he said, uh, Rabbi Skorka. So imagine yourself when I received the call that uh, from one of the journalists uh, saying to me, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we finished to, to prepare the biography of the Monsignor Bergoglio, Cardinal Bergoglio, and uh, he um, chose you to be the one to write the, uh, the preface for the book. I mean, astonish. A Jew, a rabbi, to write the preface for the Archbishop of Buenos Aires? These this actions are more than a thousand words, because this is a document. This is not a declaration. He said, he not said a declaration in this way and the other. This is not politics. This is high politics, this is beyond, this is the real politics which has to be. Is uh, So I suppose that uh, with these uh, anecdotes, uh, 
I depicted uh, before you the image of uh, my good friend that uh, the um, body of cardinals and God himself uh, chose him to be the Pope and he tries with all his uh, power to make a turning point in in history. I work with him in some points about uh, the dialogue, of course, we continue working about the dialogue. He knows about, about uh, this trip and about I inform him and uh, he write, wrote to me, um, it's, it's uh, very important uh, what you are doing. And, uh, and uh, I was part, imagine yourself, part of the Vatican um, uh, people of the official Vatican Commission, which uh, went to the Pope to to the uh, to the whole country, to Israel, to Palestine, to Jordan. I met him in the Palestine because in Jordan was Shabbat and the, to be part of the commission, of the official commission, the rabbi and our uh, Muslim friend uh, Omar Abut. And the, I proposed him the idea, let us have a hack on front of the Wailing Wall with this, uh, with this hag, with this embrace, we will close 2,000 years of, uh, of non-understanding, of clashes, of uh, so many um, uh, so many clashes between Jews and Christians. And he did that. It was out of the protocol. Uh, uh, this was his decision. I proposed him to do, to do this. And a lot of people uh, told me this is going to be a, an, imi an image for for eternity, for forever. Uh, again, more than words, actions. Words needs really spiritual courage, and he has spiritual courage. Humanity needs spiritual courage. I hope that the church will, will answer to his message. Because uh, I have not to tell you that uh, he is fighting with, uh, in order to transform his own church. And uh, in all uh, in all kind of themes, he introduced revolutions. Re revolutions, I mean, uh, turning points for good, for better. When he was in Israel, he was the first point, the first pope, to go to the tomb of Theodor Herzl, the founder of the of the Zionist movement. With this, he recognized totally. This is the act, the tremendous acts that he makes, that he performs. With this act, he said to the whole world, the Jewish people has the right to have his own country and his own country's Israel. Because he honored the founder of Zionism. Zionism really is a the political expression of a deep Jewish sentiment. And I know his uh, worry when an anti-Semitic uh, uh, thing occurs in the world. And he expressed me that and there are many other things uh, 
that I uh, believe in our uh, private relationship that we work together. And uh, there are many, many other things uh, to tell uh, in order to describe this person who tries to make a change, to perform a real change in uh, in humanity, in the history, in the history of human being in which we continue living in the middle of uh, dramatical problems, in the middle of a reality in which there are many, many people, youngsters especially, who uh, are escaping from life through drugs, who uh, cannot uh, face life and the challenges of life, and they prefer alcohol or drugs or whatever. And uh, in the middle, in the midst, of a reality of war, of cruelty, he tries really with all his uh, abilities, with all his power, and with all his faith, to give a special message. God bless me to know him, uh, to give him something from my own being, and uh, will God uh, bless him, his work, uh, in order to reach a better time. Thank you so much. some time for a question and answer uh, session. So if you uh, happen to have a question, feel free to raise your hand and uh, we'll make sure that you get a microphone. Yes. Do you know I'm from the company here? <laughs> uh, what in these battles that the uh, Pope is fighting, what Two things. One, what do you share of spirituality together? What would you say, you know, God and your brotherhood? What else are some of the common roots of your joint spirituality, if you want? And then second, uh, what gives uh, Francis hope to continue battling the battles? Did you pick it up? What gives him hope? It, in your French, with what gives him hope, uh, la poder para yeah, to continue fighting. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, in the in our in the story of our friendship, um, I can tell you that I invited him twice to. Uh, to my um, congregation uh, for a special religious service uh, whose, which name is Slichot. Slicha in Hebrew is forgiveness. And these are the uh, special uh, prayers uh, to prepare ourselves for the for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, for the days in which we have to ask forgiveness from God, from uh, our neighbors. And the, the first service in our tradition is, our tradition, the tradition of my congregation, is uh, on the Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah, at the end of the Shabbos, is around 11, around uh, 11 in the night, uh, to, um, to realize this uh, religious service. And I invited him twice. And uh, in the second opportunity, uh, I, um, I took him to his home after imagine yourself at 12 or 12:30 in the night, and during all um, 
my wife uh, drove the car, and uh, I spoke with him, and he insisted to me, believe me, I, uh, I pray together with you. I, I was in, in, in prayer together with you. Why? Because he understood, as I understand, and he understands, that uh, mm, the rabbinic Judaism, because we are the descendants of the rabbinic Judaism, and the Judaism developed by, uh, uh, by Christianity, both of them had the same womb. The Judaism or, or was created in the same womb, the Judaism of the first century of this era. And we shared a lot of things. Uh, but we have, or of course, that we have our differences. And if you read the book uh, that we wrote together, you will see that uh, we mm, analyze certain themes. And we, uh, in several themes, reach, uh, reach certain point, and we uh, don't go further. Why? Because we maintain with our silence the differences uh, with, uh, between the Jewish and the Catholic conceptions about all kinds of things. But we afford both of us to see uh, up to what point we share the same conception. And there are several, uh, the several themes in which we analyze the differences between us. But a great part, a core of the core of Judaism is the core of, uh, of Christianity. A great part of Christianity it has its roots in the Jewish tradition, especially in all the, in all the themes, or all the theology uh, which was close to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus himself, and the, the, the Gospels, the three first Gospels, the Synoptic, Synoptic Gospels, uh, they are very Jewish. Jewish in comparison with the Jewishness of the first, of the first, uh, of the rabbinic uh, uh, way of thinking of the first century. Now, the second point. What I give him in order to continue fighting all the times, even in the last time, when it, it was September 15th, last September. So <laughs> each one joked with the other about the age. I told him, oh, next uh, December 17th, I suppose, you reach 80. <laughs> no, no. I told him, uh, next December, I, 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 in some way I told him in Spanish, reach 80. He said, uh, or, no, it's, 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 a, it's, a, a, di it's a, a circle, is a, a, a circle birthday. We have a circle birthday. A circle birthday means in German, a round Geburtstag with a zero. 80, 85, something like that. I said to him, oh, in December we have a, a circle birthday. So uh, he told me why you reach 70. <laughs> he is reaching 80. <laughs> so we began joking, and I told him, as many, many times, in Spanish I tell, of course, we speak in Spanish, no me afloje. No me afloje means, a, 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 flojo means a weak person. A, aflojar is when you have a string in your hand and you you maintain the string very very strong is a, okay is good but when you begin to uh, to give up to the strongest that you maintain the string is this is a very Argentinian expression is you uh, when you weak the tension that you make on the string you say in Spanish aflojar and when one uh, would like to say to the other, go ahead with all your power. Don't, 
don't be weak, no me afloje. Is, uh, uh, until now, uh, he is keeping his word with me. <laughs> Excuse me, but I have to think in Spanish. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, for being here. Thank you so much for this wonderful book. Um, I just think it's fabulous to read this. In the section where you talk about the Holocaust, you mentioned something about asking uh, if the Vatican archives are going to be open. Could you give us an update on that, please? Um, this was a very, this uh, chapter demonstrates how openly one spoke with the other. Because uh, what I said about Pius XII is very harsh, very hard. And, uh, and he accepted that and he said this is a theme that we must uh, continue uh, analyzing uh, through the the opening of the archives and the uh, uh, part of the archives uh, were already opened uh, years ago and as far as I know is uh, they are preparing the archives and someday they will continue analyzing them. Uh, when I asked him about it, he said this is not so easy because there are uh, really uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of documents. Uh, but don't forget that uh, there are good, uh, good books already published about uh, the archives. Um, yeah. And there, are, there is a, an impressive testimony that a professor, an Italian professor, specialized in the history of, uh, of the church, um, <coughs> Show me, sent to me in Buenos Aires, about from the uh, uh, from the diaries of uh, of John the Twenty Third. He said that in 1942 or 43, uh, he met. Uh, he was then a nuncio. I don't remember. Maybe in, in Turkey uh, is. Uh, that he met uh, uh, Pius the Twelfth for twenty minutes, just an, just an appointment, and uh, he is very meticulous. Uh, uh, John the Twenty Third, and he said, "I enter it on this hour, and he received me, and from this hour, and." Uh, he told him, among other things, I am keeping now silence and I don't know how uh, humanity will judge me in the future. The most impressive uh, document that I saw about uh, the, the feeling, the deep feeling of uh, Pius XII, who is, how is the name of the professor it will come? How? Maloney. Maloney. Thanks. <laughs> Professor Maloney. Exactly. How did you know? Because he's written on John the 23rd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he, he wrote an impressive, uh, an impressive uh, biography about And they edited all the journals of, of John the Exactly, exactly, exactly. Professor Maloney. I met him in Rome, and he sent me to Buenos Aires. Uh, this quotation is impressive. Do you know about this quotation? Yes. It's impressive. Any other questions? significant 
decrease uh, in popularity or probably whatever you want, uh, uh, both in Argentina, where I'm originally from, and in Europe and uh, all over the world, at least the Western world. Um, it's true. Um, the problem of faith and of religious in our days is a, is a very great issue because faith continues being a political tool from for, a, for certain faiths and you know exactly what I mean. And from the other side, uh, from the other side, it is a decree in a real faith. Because, uh, for instance, in Christmas, you have a lot of Christian people uh, celebrating Christmas. Oh, Rosh Hashanah. You have a lot of Jews who don't celebrate Rosh Hashanah with kefir fish. <laughs> Who don't, you know what gefilte fish is. This is pure English. You, I, I learned that Schleppen is also a word in English. So, hey, I will come here and ask the copyright for my Yiddish. And uh, not to say about bagel. Okay, so, but a really religious, deep religious life in the view of Rabbi Avram Yeshua Heshel, for instance, how many people really are living religious in a deep sense of religiosity? This is the main question. We have not really great religious models, religious teachers. Uh, we, we are in need of them. And uh, what I understand is that in religion, the model, the, the guide, the teacher, is very, very important. And if we ask ourselves why a decree in religiosity, in religion, uh, we must ask ourselves who are really the leaders? What is the message of the religious leaders? Religion has to do with, uh, is related, has to do with a lot of other themes and not just a spiritual themes, a political themes, you, the old, the, the the wars we see in the Middle East are political, just political fights from one side, international interests from the great, uh, from, uh, from America, from uh, Russia, and other powers in the world. And from the other side, it's a religious, a tribal religious war. Sunita, Sun, Sunnit, Shiites, Halawites fighting one against the other. So the question is, how can we introduce a new real dimension of religiosity into the religious? Because there is a difference between religion, religion is the political structure, the, 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 how a, a religion is organized, organized. Uh, this is religion. But there is another concept, the fire of the religion. And this, the fire of the religion is the religiosity. This difference I learned from Martin Buber in one of his articles. In Hebrew is that and that yud. And in German, I don't remember in this book. Religion, religiosité, something like that. Two different concepts. April 1966, 
Poznan or Gniezno? We will never know. But what we know that 2016, Poland celebrated 1,050 years of Christianity, and 196 countries showed up. And it happened in Jubilee year. Could you briefly explain the significance of Jubilee year in Poland that will have effect now on the whole Europe and also the movement of nations. What I just spent three months in Europe and I'm going back next week to see that this Jubilee year, Jubilee attitude, which is well celebrated in Judaism and also in, 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 in Christianity, how this will have an effect on future peace in the world and also in Europe. The concept of uh, Jubilee is a concept which appears in uh, Leviticus 25 in a very clear way. It's a special year, let us call it that. A special year of spirituality. Now, regarding Poland, Oh, uh, Poland is, uh, is a theme in uh, Jewish history. I would like to speak about this. Poland is a Jewish theme in uh, Jewish history. Uh, in the 20th century, one of the most important intellectual poles in uh, Judaism mm -hmm. was uh, Poland, with a lot of uh, Jewish uh, publishing houses and uh, uh, um, the, the newspapers and the and theater, a lot of things. But uh, one of the reasons that uh, my great uh, parents, as many, many, many other Jews, uh, emigrated from Poland was the Polish anti Semitism. And what I can tell you is that I know people in Poland who are fighting for democracy and for. Uh, in order to elaborate this kind of anti-Semitism, uh, the fact that Jews live in Poland thousand years, in a thousand years, the fact that there are Jewish uh, heroes in, 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 in Polish history. For instance, uh, Berek Yosalewicz, the most, the, 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 the most uh, famous uh, uh, Jewish-Polish hero. Recognized by, by the Polish by Polish uh, uh, population, there are many streets and many in uh, the many cities and uh, name Beric Yoselewicz, uh, and I have uh, very good relationships, very good I, if I would say friends, new friends, uh, working in Poland in order to rebuild a, a new. Dialogue. There is a Jewish, a Catholic, a Christian organization working hard uh, in Poland. And uh, in this sense, I hope that the whole Polish culture, because the Polish people was a Polish who suffered a lot. And uh, the sufferings is, uh, it, it, suffering brings from time to time uh, bad things, great bad things. Anti-Semitism in Poland was one of them. But now there are people who are fighting, and hopefully in the Jubilee, uh, those people will receive God's blessing. And this will be a blessing for, all, for the whole Europe, which is enough anti-Semitic. You have a friend in me, too. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. I've um, got a question about uh, globalism and, of course, peaceful, uh, bringing peaceful people together in a global initiative. And I was wondering what your opinion or agenda is for the future, as well as the Pope's. Again, again. To create a discussion or dialogue worldwide uh, yeah. on the issue of peace. Uh, yes, uh, this is a need. What you said is a great need to bring together people who are um, uh, who have a really commitment to bring peace and humanity. Yes, yes. You know, um, 
uh, we lost, we Jews lost uh, one very great leader uh, that in the last uh, years of his life, I, I came in dialogue with him, with, uh, who was uh, Shimon Peres. Shimon Peres was uh, very close to, uh, to Francis. And uh, Francis told me that, um, that a special, uh, I suppose that in English is the same expression, that since the first moment they come together, a special chemistry was between, between them. One and this, and this stood immediately uh, the other. Uh, one recognizing the other a partner uh, for peace. Uh, and uh, the last time I was with the Pope, we prayed for the health of uh, Shimon Perez. And uh, I commented him about the plans of the Shimon Perez uh, Center for Peace, uh, how the Vatican can work together with the Jewish people through uh, this institution. This was one of the issues. Yeah, yeah of course, but there are so many problems uh, in the middle that uh, that it's not so easy to create a really such an organization. But uh, it's a need, it's a traumatic need. We have time for uh, about two more questions. Thank you for being here, Rabbi. Um, my name is Father Stefan Brown. I'm the parochial vicar at St. Paul Church in Tampa. And one of the programs or one of the um, initiatives we've begun is interreligious uh, leaders, priests, uh, rabbis, imams, uh, coming together in dialogue. And in December, we're going to be welcoming a team from France uh, as part of this Tampa's initiative as a sister city. But my question really is, uh, as we come together as religious leaders and we grow in relationship, and this was the beautiful thing I found uh, in the book, was the great relationship that you had with uh, Bergoglio, particularly uh, as both uh, great respect and great affection. And so the challenge, and, and Rabbi Rosenberg is with me, we've been working together, is the question is, can you give any recommendation or guidance how we pass this relationship that is developing amongst religious leaders, both here in Tampa and, and sort of follow, following up the last question, internationally as French religious leaders come together and join us at St. Paul's next month, how can we pass this on to our people? Because it's a, it seems to be the, the need for the change of heart, but particularly growing in respect and growing in affection um, were the words that you used that, that really touched me. Can you give any guidance on how to help our people move in that direction? I will tell you a story. Uh, before Nostra Etate, some interesting story about, uh, about Argentina. Argentina, it was very peculiar regarding the, the dialogue. Even before Nuestra Etate, were people who understood that that's, that must be an approach between, uh, between Jews and Christians, that they, not in order to evangelize one the other, God behaves, but in order to come together and uh, to, to know each the other, because the only way, this I heard first time from a priest, the only way to eliminate anti-Semitism is knowing each the other. Because you can introduce a sentiment of hate on the ignorance of who the other is. Um, and where a priest and a, a rabbi who served as a rabbi before me in the first, my first um, congregation in Argentina named La Merotacol, this, uh, despite all, because it was founded by uh, Jews who uh, abandoned, who, uh, God helped them to abandon Germany in the last moment, in the, the late 30s. And they came to Argentina and they said, okay, we, are, we will build up again a community in the, uh, as we had in Germany, a liberal community. And uh, the rabbi who uh, 
name was Paul Hirsch of blessed memory. Um, the, the priest of Volkamp, <laughs> Meloni maybe that you know about, <laughs> uh, Volkamp, is uh, uh, Poli, exactly, exactly, Father Poli. He passed away uh, a, a, a couple months ago with the 90, both of them of blessed memory. They said, we must do something uh, in order to, uh, to do exactly what you mentioned, uh, to give the, our message to our congregations. And they organized, uh, they organized, you are from Vicente Lopez? Ah, because that, you, you knew, you know exactly this story. My father founded Lambrotacón. So, uh, was one of the founders of Lambrotacón, yeah. one of them. So, uh, they organized a lot of uh, uh, common activities, uh, which uh, made interactions between uh, between the his uh, between the Christians of the par uh, uh, parroquia, how do you say it? Parish, parish, and the parish and the synagogue. Uh, so a lot. I I remember that when I began working together, we organized an exposition of Bibles, and uh, I spoke in the. Um, to the church. This was my uh, first steps in, in dialogue about the meaning of the Bible and uh, uh, what an, ex an exposition where Jews, Christians from the parroch and from the synagogue came together and uh, this is the way, this is the beginning. The problem is that the media in our days uh, look for a sensationalistic uh, news. And uh, this kind of events have not, uh, have not a place. And we must fight. I thought in Argentina it wasn't so easy for me to publish the articles in La Nación. Uh, they published because they really con did consider that uh, the articles are, are good and they have a message, and not all of the articles they, they, they publish. I, I fought, and I fought together with Bergoglio, because there were times in which uh, La Nación had, had no interest to publish articles about religion, and Bergoglio had connections, and, uh, and it was difficult for him and for me to publish the articles. This is the problem. We have to fight against a, a, a against the propaganda, against the media, in order to transmit a message of peace. Uh, morbo is, morbo is English also, right? Morbosity, you know this word or not? Morbo, morbo is a, is a very good, uh, serves as a good, a very good uh, uh, element for excitement of the bad instincts in human beings. And you can uh, sell very good morbo, but to sell spirituality is not so easy. <laughs> okay, the last question. Rabbi, no, you, you are going to learn a lot of words in English. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Rabbi, I noticed that tomorrow you're meeting with Rabbi Susanna Heschel the daughter of one of the most brilliant theologians and philosophers of the 20th century. Could you give us a little bit of insight as to what conversation or dialogue you and Pope Francis have had in relation to his brilliant thought? Um, Pope Francis knows very, very well that Heschel had a great influence on, on me. Uh, one of my teachers in rabbinics, uh, Rabbi Marshall Meyer, was one of the mo of the closest students of uh, Abraham Yeshua Heschel, and I gave Bergoglio not only Bergoglio, also Spadaro, Father Spadaro, the Jesuit, and he is the 
uh, editor of La Civilità Cattolica, which is the most important, uh, uh, let's say, the official uh, magazine of the Vatican, because uh, this magazine has the uh, approval of the Pope. And uh, him, as well as the Pope, I, because we, we are befriended also, uh, and other uh, Christians, I gave the Spanish translation of the, we did in the rabbinical seminary, of the books of uh, Abraham Yeshua Heschel, God in Search of Man, Man in Search of God, the Shabbat, and so on and so on. Um, but tomorrow I am going to to speak uh, not only on this uh, point, but how really deeply Abraham Yeshua Eshel had an influence on me. Uh, great influence, great influence. Uh, really a great influence. Because uh, um, uh, he brought me to the reality that if I would like sanctify God, or to approach God in a special relationship, I must first and foremost approach my neighbor. Well, the first book, I suppose, that, uh, as I remember, that uh, Heschel published was in Warsaw, I was in Yiddish, and the name of the book is The Ineffable Name of God. The ineffable day, reference of God. When one say in Yiddish, the ine ineffable name, one knows that this is the name of God. Two dots, match. The ineffable name. Two dots, match. A mensch, I realize, today is also an English word. <laughs> so, okay, thank you so much. My friends, thank you very much uh, for uh, being here. I wanted uh, just to uh, share with you a few details about what's next. Uh, there will be a coffee and dessert break uh, coming up here at 2 o'clock. Uh, so please feel free to get some coffee and dessert. If you would, we're asking that you step out of the room momentarily so we can have the tables cleared from lunch. Uh, on the schedule, you'll see that there are two other sessions that are coming after this one, uh, which include uh, some very special visitors to campus where we're going to have Jewish Catholic dialogue for the rest of the day here. Um, and we're going to be talking about actions, picking up a theme that uh, Rabbi Sorka touched on, actions in Florida. What sort of actions with regard to Jewish Catholic relations are we participating in Florida? What do we have going on on the ground? Uh, so uh, please, I invite you to stay for that. And also, please note, uh, tomorrow night, uh, Abraham Skorka will be presented with the Center for Catholic Jewish Studies 13th uh, Eternal Light Award. This award is given to uh, those who make outstanding contributions to Jewish Catholic relations. And so if you're interested in attending, please see, see me, talk to me. Uh, this event will be in Sarasota tomorrow night, and I'm happy to give you information about it. Uh, thank you, and uh, enjoy the break. <laughs>